Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo Academy, the show where we teach you how to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So if you want to get that, make sure you stay until the end. Also, if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, make sure that you jump into the description, click on the link there and download the sample files. Also, if you do not own Luminar Neo, make sure you use the link in the description together with the discount code so you can get the best deal on your new purchase. And finally, we would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In this tutorial, we're going to celebrate the 4th of July and Bastille Day by showing you how to add fireworks to your images in Luminar Neo. To do this, we're going to use the power of layer editing as well as some of the creative tools to finish the effect. We are once again in Luminar Neo and in the catalog module. We are starting by looking at the sample files. If you would like to do the edit on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video click on the link there and download the sample files from there. With today's sample files, you will get four firework overlays, one orange working layer and one sample image. You're more than welcome to keep all the overlays and use them on your future projects. However, if you're looking for more elements, you should check out our Luminar Neo Power Bundle that have over 900 new elements that you can use in Luminar Neo with your favorite tools. But now back to our edit, let's select the sample image and move it into edit module. You can do that by hitting E on your keyboard or clicking on the edit on the top of your screen. Once we in the edit module, we're going to start by focusing on the layers panel. Here simply click on the plus sign and then on load image. After that, you need to locate your sample files and then one by one, import all the fireworks as well as the orange layers. Once you finish, we're going to start by adding the fireworks to the image. Simply select one, click on it, and in a few seconds, it will appear on the top of your image. Now looking at the layers panel, you can see that the layer that is selected has a blue frame around it, as well as on the main image. Now in a corner of the blue frame, you get these white dots. By hovering over them and then dragging them, you can adjust the size of the overlay by keeping the same ratio. When you hover over the sides of the overlay, you can adjust individually the height and the width. By hovering outside of the overlay, you can then rotate the overlay around. And finally, when you hover over the overlay, you get this little hand icon and with that you can position your overlay around the image. So this is how you transform your elements, layers and overlays on your image. Now moving into our main toolbar and the layer properties. The layer properties always edit the layer that is selected in our layers panel. We have the choice of opacity, so we want to increase this to 100%. Then we have a choice of blend modes, then you can flip your overlay, and then you can fit it, fill it, or stretch it to your image. So this is what you can do with your elements, layers, and overlays. Let's make this one a little smaller and leave it on the sky. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to add all the different fireworks. So we're going to go back to our layers panel, click on a plus sign and let's select the second one. Follow the same workflow, increase the opacity, adjust the size and just place it on the sky. Back to the layers panel, plus sign, third, fireworks, adjust its size, increase the opacity and then place it on the sky. And then finish it off, one more plus sign and the Fireworks number four, adjust the size and place it on the sky and increase the opacity. So now we're going to move the fireworks around the scene to create as realistic result as possible. So how are we going to do this? Well, we are here and as you can see, the layer that is selected has a blue frame around it. Now we can move between them by simply clicking on the other ones, as you can see. 
And remember that it's always the layer that has a blue frame in the layers panel that is selected. Well, since we're on this one, let's start with this one. So we're going to position it around the Eiffel Tower, adjust its size to something like this. And let's say that we place it right here so it looks like it's coming from the actual Eiffel Tower. Now, it would be good if we would have another one from the other side. So how are we going to do this? Well, we can come back to our layers, right click on this fireworks and click on duplicate layer. So this way we get another exactly the same layer. It keeps the same settings and all the same position and transformation. So now let's just drag it, rotate it around. And what we could do now, we could flip it. So let's flip it by using the flip horizontally option. And now again, we can rotate it and place it on the other side of the Eiffel Tower. And to use this fireworks one more time, we can place it on top of the Eiffel Tower. So again, let's go back to our layers, right click on it and click duplicate layer. Once it finished, it appears on our layers. Now we can again drag it, rotate it around and place it on a top. So I think something like this. Now let's continue with the other fireworks. So let's say we're going to use this one. So we can place this one somewhere around here. And then let's place another one on the other side. So coming back to our layers, the one with the blue frame, right click on it and click duplicate layer. Again, we get the duplicate. We can move it around. We can rotate it around to adjust its position. So it's not exactly the same. And something like this is looking good. Now with this layer and with this overlay we can adjust its position size and i think maybe leave it somewhere here again we have a missing spot here so what could we add here we can maybe take this fireworks again come back to our layers right click duplicate it and again once it duplicates we're gonna place it to the empty spot now we can drag and drop it here maybe make it a little bigger rotate it around and that's looking great. Again, we have this one. We haven't used it yet. We can make this one nice and big. Let's say something like this and nicely position it here. And I think here there is also some space still. So let's see if we would use this one again. Right click on it in our layers, duplicate layer and wait a second. And then we can position it on the other side. Once we have it again, let's say that we flip it around so it doesn't look the same. Maybe we can also flip it upside down. So we get something like this. We can add the, adjust its size and place it somewhere around here. So that's all looking great. This one, maybe we can put it closer. This one as well. This one, position it here. This one, if we want, we can make it a little bigger. And I think it's looking great. It's looking like a scene full of fireworks. So I'm really happy with it. So that's a start. Now we have a fireworks everywhere. Now we want to make another effect. When you would have all these fireworks around, there would be a little bit of color reflection or light color reflection on the buildings. So how are we going to do this? Well, for this, we're going to go into our layers panel, click on a plus sign, and we're going to use this orange layer. So click on it and import it in our layers. Now, after it appears, we want to make it a little bit bigger. So it covers the entire image and you we can use the sides for it and do something like this. Then we can jump into our layer properties, increase the opacity, and then it covers the entire image. So we need to adjust its blend mode. So now we can click on the drop down box and we can use something between overlay and see how it looks, or soft light also sometimes looks very good. So maybe let's use soft light. But of course, we don't want it anywhere. We just want it around the similar spots where the fireworks is. So now we're gonna go into the masking. In the masking, we're gonna click on brush. And in a brush, we're going to paint wherever we want the effect. So we're going to stay on a paint, adjust the size. We're going to keep the same softness and we're going to adjust the strength. Let's start with 30. So now it's not going to be perfect. However, we're going to paint in the areas where we think that the fireworks should be. Let's just adjust the size a little bit. And let's say that the first reflection should be somewhere around here. We click once and the effect will disappear from everywhere and it will only appear where are we going to paint. So let's paint over this area, maybe this building. 
and we're gonna get slowly slowly a little bit of extra orange here so maybe we need to increase the strength let's have a look at it maybe a little bit more so let's go for 50 and again paint over this area so we're getting some orange here now looking at this fireworks let's say that it would be showing and reflecting somewhere here make a nice painting paint the effect in and let's have a look what we're gonna get something like this perfect now we have this fireworks so again let's paint somewhere over here excellent now for this one we're gonna do a similar location we're gonna paint somewhere here and i know it's very subtle it's not that visible but just enough for it to be a little bit more realistic now again we're looking at this one so we can paint somewhere over here. And finally, for this one, let's say that we're gonna paint somewhere over here. So there you have it. So now we have the fireworks, we have its reflection, and we are finished with the layers panel. So the next step we're gonna do is, we're gonna export this image in the highest possible quality, and then we're gonna bring it and do some global editing and global effects to it. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna go in a corner of our screen and click on a little export icon here. We can click on disk and that will open the export window. Now we need to navigate to the location where you wanna save it. So in our case, let's go back to the same folder where are our sample files. We can call it fileworks and we're gonna call it mid edit. After that, we need to adjust the file. So let's have a look. We have the sharpen, we're gonna leave it on none. Resize, we want the original. Color space, let's leave it on sRGB. Format, we definitely wanna go for TIFF. Compression, none. Depth, go for the 16 bits, so we get as much data as possible. Resolution on 300, and then click on Save Transparency. So make sure that it's unclicked. Once you're happy, you just hit Save, and you wait a moment. Once it's finished exporting, I will meet you in the catalog module. So now, as you can see, we are back in the catalog module. And because I exported the image in the same folder, it now appeared in the sample files in the same folder. So now we can select it and move it into edit module. Now looking at it, you can see that it has all the fireworks as well as the reflection. However, our layers panel has just the one layer. So now we're gonna leave the layers panel behind and we're gonna move our attention towards our main toolbar. It's here where we're gonna apply some global adjustments to really melt and blend everything together. So starting first, we're gonna use the Enhance AI. Simply click on its name and then increase the accent to see what you really like. I think I don't wanna go crazy on it, but somewhere around 15 makes it all a little bit nicer. After that, I can close it and move to another tool. For a scene like this, where there are some dark tones and lots of light, which requires a glow, the great tool for this is the mystical tool. So we're gonna go into the creative section and click on the mystical tool. Click on it, open it, and here simply use the amount slider to add a little bit of extra glow and a little bit of extra contrast. So again, let's have a look before and after, and it's starting to look great. The final thing we're gonna do to make sure that it all looks as realistic as possible is to move into our mood tool, where we're gonna use the LUT on the top of our image to make it everything blend together. Here in the mood tool, we can click on a LUT Dropbox and we can use one of the LUTs that are already with the application. Now we're gonna go into the section with the cinematic toning and here there are multiple ones we can use. We can, for example, use the long beach and increase the amount to get something like this, heavy and contrasty. But me, I would prefer to go for the riverside bring down the amount and get something like this with a little bit of fade and a little bit of cinematic feel. Finally, what we can do, we can jump back to our essential tools, click on the vignette and add the little vignette to the entire image. We do that by simply bringing down the amount slider to the point where we'll see the result. So there you have it. So this is the result. This is how you can add your fireworks to the images with the simple help of layers panel. We have used some fireworks overlays, orange working layer, and then some global adjustments from the essentials and creative tools. And now it's time to get your gift. 
If you want to get access to our Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, all you need to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminar gift. And there you can download the cheat sheet and start to use it right away. And there you have it. So I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share our video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.